All right, uh, it's tilled in again from truck 10. We're going to talk a little bit more about commercial, uh, commercial forcible entry. Uh, this time, instead of the front of the door, we're going to go to the back of the occupancy or the side of the occupancy where we have outward swinging doors. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is a little bit about um, the priorities uh, for a truck company. If we end up on the back of something like this, which you'll probably hear is uh, truck 10 arrive on scene spotting a specific corner of the building and saying all in forcible entry and assisting with fire attack and or search. So what that means is that our pri uh, primary responsibility is going to be the point of entry, force entry, and then um, additional uh, points of entry, which might be the Bravo 1, Bravo 2, or Delta 1, Delta 2 exposures and or the rear of the building. Not all four of us are going to work together to force one door. We'll probably split the captain firefighter and the tools firefighter will be responsible for the point of entry door and the saw and the AO will probably go to the rear or wherever they need to go to uh, to force entry uh, at that point. The minimum tool complement that we're going to carry are uh, a six foot hook, the set of irons, which should include the Halligan, an eight pound flat and or the 10 pound sledge and then uh, the 12 and or 14 inch search saw. All right, with that being said, we're gonna go right into uh, the three things that we look up when we're um, sizing up a door. The first thing is the frame. Uh, this is a, uh, a ordinary constructed building. We've got a metal wrapped frame here. Uh, the second thing that we're looking at is the door. We wanna look and see if it's inward and outward because it's flush to the wall and we can see the exposed hinges we know it's an outward swinging door the other thing that we're looking at is the type of door this is a metal door and most likely it's hollow and what i mean by hollow is uh, it's a thicker gauge metal on the shell and then inside of it will probably have some foam and or uh, cardboard in there um, but it bends it bends easy uh, when you strike it with a, a flat head the other thing that we notice too or don't notice on this door are any bolt heads or anything that might lead us to believe there's some additional locking mechanism, me mechanisms on this. Uh, the last thing that we look at is the locking mechanism. And right here it looks like we've got some panic hardware um, which is probably has a throw right here on the other side of this. Unlike the panic hardware that we see on the commercial storefront doors that's locked top and bottom, this is a latch that's locked on the opposite side of this frame here. Okay, uh, the three things that we're gonna do when we force entry, gap, set, force. When we gap, we're trying to separate the door from the jam, and you see right here, somebody's already done that for us. Now there's a couple different ways to gap. Um, one of the things that we wanna do is we wanna stand on the inside of the door we want to work within about six inches above, six inches in, and six inches below the locking mechanism. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my striking tool, whether it's the eight pound flat or the 10 pound sledge, and I'm going to strike this area repeatedly. And what's going to happen is that metal is going to bend back, much like you see right here. That's one way to do it. Another way to gap it, if it's a really tight seam, is I can put the blade of my axe right here. I'm going to foot the axe handle, strike this a few times, pull the axe out, and I'll get a little bit of a gap. Now to continue to increase this gap, I'm going to insert my tool. Again, this would be right at the locking mechanism if, if possible, but for demonstration purposes, I'm going to insert my tool here, and I'm going to push down and up, and that's going to crush the metal. There's really good uh, videos on YouTube that demonstrate this if you want to look it up. But the more that I can create a gap in here, the easier it is to do the next step, which is set my tool. Since this is an outward swinging door, I'm going to start with my ads. I'm going to bury the tool until I hit the stop. A lot of us have our tool marked on the, the ads an inch and three quarter up from the end of the ads and we'll have a line right here a flat file line and that will let us know when we actually hit the jam and if you look in here you can see where it's going to hit the jam once it hits the jam i've got to make 
an adjustment with the tool. And I gotta pull the tool towards my body to clear the stop on that backside. And then my partner is gonna continue to strike this tool until the adz is all the way set past the door. Once my tool is set, then I'm gonna force it. And I'm gonna go down and towards my body. That should clear the throw of the pan of hardware and pop right open. The last thing I want to do is put my foot in front of me so when the door pops open, it doesn't hit me in the face. That's one technique to get this open. We want to try to have at least three different techniques to get in the um, one obstacle, that being the first, probably most efficient technique. A second technique we can use is we're gonna get the circ saw and we're gonna actually remove the locking mechanism here. We're gonna make two cuts cut right there and a cut right here like this and hopefully that will cut all the metal through we can remove that locking mechanism and pop it open the third way is the hinge way um, this way takes a little bit more time it's a little bit harder but what we're going to want to do is we're going to get the circ saw and we're going to want to cut these two little notches right here and then we'll go down here cut all three hinges and then we'll probably need to get our ads in there to pop this door out so this door is the one right next to the one that we were talking about a second ago and you can see here that if you're looking at the door it presents you with a couple different things uh, that might lead you to believe there's some additional locking mechanisms. We got a slide bolt right here with a, a, a padlock, a case hardened padlock. We've got some bolt heads here, which will lead us to believe there's a drop arm behind this. And then we've got some screws up here, which probably lead us to be there's some kind of slide bolt that goes in, up into the frame here. talk about the slide bolt here with the uh, padlock there's a couple different ways to overcome this um, since this is screwed into a metal door just creating leverage burying this pick behind the slide bolt and popping this you might actually be able to pull the slide out of the the latch here um, this padlock is large enough that you're not going to be able to overcome it um, by the using thing yeah okay all right, so we have a slide bolt here with a case hardened padlock. Uh, there's a couple different ways to overcome this. Um, we can try to create some leverage. We can insert our pick or our ads behind the slide bolt, get up underneath it, lift up, and maybe strip that slide bolt out of that latch and it'll pop open. Um, another way, which probably won't work because of this padlock, it's a pretty heavy duty padlock, but we can try it anyways insert our forks over the shackle there, twist, create some leverage and maybe sh uh, shear it off of that latch right there. And then the last way, which probably would be the easiest way because we'll, be, we'll have the circ saw anyways, is just cut, cut the throw there. Um, we can also cut the padlock, remove the padlock, it probably causes the least amount of damage. Um, these deadbolt or these bolt heads right here, like I said, lead us to believe that there's some kind of drop arm on the other side of this that's covering the door um, and the frame. A couple of different ways um, to overcome this. Uh, one way, which is probably a little bit slower than the second way, we can insert the pick next to the bolt like this, strike it in here a few times, give some, some room or some area for this bolt head to go, and then push this bolt head through. way, probably more efficient way, is to actually get the blade of the circ saw behind those bolt heads and shear them off. As far as this slide bolt goes, um, we're going to kind of have to deal with it once we get this door open. Um, we might have to reach up in there and cut, we might be able to cut these off and uh, maybe that will uh, let the slide bolt behind it follow. But there might get a point in time where you just actually have to pick a different door to force it. It's got too many options. 